Greetings metalheads and welcome to No Nonsense Metal Reviews. I'm George and today I'm back with four more album recommendations falling very comfortably within the more extreme end of the death metal spectrum. So I would say brutal death metal. I would consider these recommendations or some of them at least to be a little bit more obscure. Of course I completely appreciate it if you are well and truly deep into your brutal death metal, your very extreme death metal, then no doubt these albums, these recommendations will not be obscure to you and are probably, in your opinion, household names. However, for those such as myself who maybe aren't as, um, as deeply into their brutal death metal, not as in the know, not as quite as knowledgeable or up to speed, with their brutal death metal, these albums are a really good starting point. These are good recommendations for someone wanting to explore the brutal death metal um, end of the subgenre a little bit more. Um, I've mentioned a few times on this channel that, to be honest, I am a little bit rusty, a little bit um, out of touch when it comes to the more extreme end of the death metal spectrum with the uh, brutal death metal or sort of slam. Um, uh, areas of that subgenre in particular being a little bit of a grey area for me. I'm not, I'm not all that up to date, shall we say. But I have been trying to delve a little bit deeper and kind of explore those areas, those really extreme uh, outer limits of the death metal scene a little bit more over the last however many months, maybe the last year or so. And these albums I've picked up here and there, maybe on Amazon, eBay, whatever wherever I've got them from, um, they have been the ones that have been, I guess, I've, I've been most impressed by. So we'll kick off with the first album then. This is out on Unique Leader Records, which is a great label. Um, they have produced a lot of killer material, and put out a lot of great albums, great, great works. Um, very much based on the kind of brutal death metal scene. Uh, I know they cover some of the sort of the slam bands as well. But this album was released in 2017. This is from a band entitled Condemned. And this, I believe, is their third album, which is called His Divine Shadow. Has some seriously awesome artwork there from Pa Olofsson. Um, great artist, a, a renowned artist who's done a lot of great uh, album covers. A lot going on there, a lot of textures, uh, and there's a good shot of the band. I do like their logo as well. I think that some of the brutal death metal bands have some really, really eye-catching. I love the sort of symmetry of it, some really standout logos. So I believe that Condemned have had some lineup changes um, since this album, I believe. Uh, but at this stage, we have Steve Pro on guitars. We've got Tyson um, Dupin on drums. Got Sam Townsley on vocals and Ryan Reedy on bass. So there's the guys there. So this band, I would say, falls very comfortably into that brutal death metal kind of sound and style. Brings a lot um, of immolation to mind. Certainly in Sam's vocals, I'm picking up a lot of immolation influence there. Uh, certainly that style. It's not slam. It's not influenced by slam at all. I would say this is comfortably death metal, brutal death metal. Not overly technical either, which is another good thing in my mind because although I can appreciate some sort of technical death metal, it's totally lost on me when it gets insanely complicated and fiddly and widdly diddly. It's just, it's not what I'm interested in. But this stuff is good. This is very good. It's not an overly long album. Uh, His Divine Shadow is, I believe it's around half an hour long, 30 minutes in that sort of region, so not overly long. But we've got some great riff work, some killer, thick, chugging, barbaric riffery. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Really, really good, strong death metal. Uh, so we do get a interlude piece, um, which is Prenumbre. Uh, before we kick into the album proper with the first sort of proper track, which is Dawn, which is Savage. It's a savage track, it's just barbaric, pummeling riffs, drum work is neat, 
really tight stuff, some great blasting in there. Um, the album really does kind of flow quite seamlessly. Uh, there are some more standout moments. Um, I can't remember if it's Ascending the Spectral Throne or Nefarious Sanguine Decree, but one of them has a really gross intro. Check it out and you'll know what I mean. It's kind of this horrible, slurping, grotesque sound. Really interesting. But start to finish, this is just a solid, brutal death metal album. Some great riff work, as I mentioned, and some seriously solid vocal performances as well. Um, notable standouts then. Uh, I did mention there the Ascending the Spectral Throne. Um, elsewhere, the title track is a really solid one, as is The Hive Ablaze. Really good album. Check it out. If you like, as I mentioned, if you like um, Immolation, then that's probably quite a good starting point. Immolation being quite, a, I guess, a, a bit more of a well-known death metal band. Uh, but if you like Immolation, if you like Dying Fetus or Suffocation, then definitely check out Condemned. I know that they do have a couple of other albums, um, and they're not exactly prolific um, that releasing albums. They don't seem to release albums all that often. This is six years ago this album was released. A little bit of quick metal encyclopedia research does tell me. So this band, Condemned, from the USA, not a lot of material in their catalogue, but this album is a real killer. Absolutely. So check it out. Condemned with his divine shadow. So, the next band then, all the way from Australia, and this album, which was released in, I believe it was 2014 as well. Yeah, 2014. This album, from Disentomb, this is entitled Misery. Now, this is a very good album. This is very atmospheric. It's very dark, brutal death metal. Um, Disentomb I've talked about on the channel recently where I picked up a stunning coloured vinyl, double album vinyl um, of their latest studio album, The Decaying Light. Now that album is an absolute winner. It's got a real darkness and depth to it. It's brutal death metal, but it's it's got so much going on. It's so deep and layered. There's a lot of texture there really sort of haunting vocal style as well, where it's kind of like set back. So the vocals aren't at the forefront growling in your face. It's almost like the vocals form an instrument in that sort of atmospheric soundscaping. This album, Misery, a little bit more on the kind of, I'm not going to say generic, but a little bit more textbook brutal death metal, but so much stuff going on here. This is really unique. Amazing artwork. I absolutely love that album cover. The artwork is from Nick Keller. Fantastic artwork. So deep, so dark. Um, we do also have guest vocals from the late great Trevor Stranad on um, Forced Adornment of the Funerary Crown, which I believe is the second to last track there. Uh, and I should mention this is released through New Standard Elite. So I was absolutely convinced that I had a CD copy of this from way back when. I was absolutely convinced that I did. But when I did that review for um, The Decaying Light, I then went searching for this and I could not find it. I couldn't find it. So maybe I was getting my wires crossed. Maybe I had just listened to it on YouTube or something at the time um, of Discovery. But I subsequently bought it again because it's just been reissued. Um, so I picked it up for a tenner on Amazon. No real loss, because it's absolutely worth having. This is such a good album. Uh, the lineup wise I should say, I'll just show the guys here again. It's a really cool layout there. I do love their logo. They have got a great logo. It's really eye-catching. So the lineup here consists of Henry Sison on drums. We've got Jordan James on vocals. We've got Jim Parker on bass and Jake Wilkes on guitar as well. So Jordan James, a fantastic vocalist, a really good, accomplished, brutal death metal vocalist. He's got a great, great low guttural sound. Um, but again, as I say, it's not right in your face kind of roaring. It works its way into this kind of atmospheric, um, textured style. Riffs are killer. We've got a lot of brutality here. I really like the drum sound as well. It's not tinny but it's not thumping in your face constantly. It's a good mix. 
And I know that Disentomb do get thrown in with the sort of the slam or the brutal slamming death metal bands quite a lot. There are some elements here that I think are a little bit more reflective of a slam. Can't take that away from them. However, this is not a slam band. This is definitely, most definitely a brutal death metal band. Quite technical as well. There's a lot of technicality there. So if you like bands such as um, Inherit Disease, for example, just comes to mind, or shall we say a band such as um, Defeated Sanity or Suffocation, again, very quite, quite technical death metal bands, then you're definitely going to be able to appreciate this. And I know that this is a little bit of a, this is a, a fan favourite album. This is held in very high regard by a lot of people, uh, fans and fans alike, as being quite a benchmark album within the kind of brutal, technical, a little bit slam, brutal death metal scene. So we kick off with an intro, The Genesis of Misery, which is a good one. It sets the scene. It builds tension. It builds atmosphere at this early stage. And then we're straight into an edifice of arch bestial impurity. Love the title tracks, or the track titles, I should say, on this album. Really good. Um, real standouts for me, because again, just like that um, Condemned album, His Divine Shadow, this album flows really quite seamlessly. So it's the sort of album where you would put it on and just let it run. Although, to be honest, I let I do that with every album. I'm not the sort of person that will just listen to individual tracks here and there, um, just skipping through. I tend to listen to, well, I don't tend to, I do listen to albums start to finish just because I like the, the flow of it. It puts things in context, but hey, that's just how I listen to music. Um, so although there aren't many tracks that I might be able to say, yeah, definitely check out that one. I would say an edifice of arch bestial impurity. Definitely check that out. You've got to really check out the whole album. It's not a massive commitment. It's in the region of about 35 minutes, I believe. Um, just off the top of my head. Uh, the Promethean Altar is one that I do remember stands out, as is uh, Thonic Gateways. So, and also, of course, you've got that track with uh, the late great Trevor from the Black Dahlia Murder. Uh, forced adornment of the funerary crown it's just great start to finish if you like as i say inherit disease uh, or suffocation then you're definitely gonna like misery from disentomb check it out it's a very good album it's been out for a while but it's an absolutely solid effort really really quite a standout album check it out australian brutal death metal so we're going to uh, travel a little distance here from Australia to the Philippines, in fact. For this release, this is their debut album, released in 2021, I believe, off the top of my head, from a... I'm going to say they are a slam band, a brutal slamming death metal band. However, they are more on the traditional death metal end of the slam spectrum rather than the kind of epicardiectomy end where it's just guttural chug drudgery caveman stomp sort of stuff i'm talking about cerebral depravity as i say from the philippines with their debut album which as i say 2021 i believe this came out this is entitled decades of suffering so almost it has a, a, a title that makes it sound like it's going to be a compilation but it's got the generic kind of slam um album cover where it's just horrifically grotesque and there's lots of brutality going on there but to be honest you know it sets the scene quite nicely um really brutal artwork there really grotesque actually the more you look at it the more messed up you realize it is yeah pretty gross probably best not to look at it for too long there's our lineup on the back there there's the guys so the band consists of ivan rico on vocals we've got john on guitars we've got um jomar or yomar on bass and uh or omar not quite sure. And then we've got uh, Mark on drums. So looking at the guys, you've got a real mix. You've got some members that look very much representative of slam and the kind of aesthetic and style of slam. And then you have some guys that just look like death metal fans, to be honest. What would I say about this band? I would say that actually this is quite enjoyable. If you like your slam and you like your brutal death metal, then this is enjoyable stuff. Uh, Cerebral Depravity have an interesting sound to them. I think that they do stand out a little bit uh, above a lot of their peers. 
Um, nowhere near as sophisticated and complex as Disentomb, but a little bit more to it, well, actually quite a bit more to it than bands, as I mentioned, like Epicardiectomy, where it's just, um, it's quite formulaic, just chug, stomp, slam, caveman stuff. There's a bit more going on here. Um, I would say that Ivan Rico is actually quite a good brutal death metal vocalist. Definitely. He's got a bit of a Chris Barnes thing going on there. He's got a little bit of a Chris Barnes sound and style, which to me is no bad thing because I'm a big fan of Chris Barnes' vocals, um, whether it be Cannibal Corpse era, Six Feet Under era, whatever. I think that he's a good vocalist. So my, uh, Ivan, I should say, Ivan Rico does a good job there. Uh, the album's not very long at all. Uh, I think it's less than half an hour, to be honest. Consisting of nine tracks. Um, we start off with an intro, which is Endless Suffering, which is an absolute chug riff fest. The riffs are great on this album. It's really primal, primitive, sludgy, just nasty, putrid riffs. It's good stuff. This is good death metal. Uh, then we get Perverted Addiction of Cruelty, which is savage. Again, it's got it's got a good sort of cannibal corpse vibe to it. Um, again, not quite as sophisticated, but it's enjoyable enough. Uh, I really like the title track, Decades of Suffering, which kicks off with some really quite prominent, um, and I, I don't know where I've heard it before. I know that I've heard it in the um, Grand Morbid Funeral uh, track from um, Bloodbath, but it's got Gregorian chant. Quite a long section at the intro of the song, which is Gregorian chant, before you get more savage, brutal death metal. It's good stuff, though. Uh, a great title here. We have Hatred on Itchy Bitchy Fucking Whore, which, I mean, to be honest, you could probably come up with a little bit more of a creative title there, but even so, it's good. It's good. It's a, it's a savage track. Um, Auto of Hate, which is a good one. Uh, another great track title Title for the track, we get the Luciferian Blackened Sermon of the Holy Heaven Fallen. That sounds more like a, a obscure black metal band's album title, but it's good. This is just sort of good, brutal death metal. If you like your slam, if you like, I'm trying to think of a few examples, but maybe if you like bands like Disgorge or uh, visceral disgorge for that matter um, if you like putridity then yeah I think you're going to enjoy this this is just to be honest it's it's fairly harmless trying to be really extreme slamming death metal I would say it's definitely worth checking out if you like your brutal death metal stuff cerebral depravity check out this album it's it's not a long commitment as I say um, so a bit of a band you need to hear recommendation as this is their only release I think these guys will do fine. If they keep plowing that furrow, uh, releasing their brutal stuff, then yeah, let's face it. S slam is a pretty saturated subgenre. There is so many bands and so many bands that aren't really bands. It is one, one guy and his laptop. So what I do like about Cerebral Depravity is the fact that it's an actual band. You have guitarist, you have drummer. Brilliant. What, what more do you need? You need an actual band releasing some cracking, fairly enjoyable, easygoing, brutal death metal. So that brings us to our final article then, which is probably the, the curveball of this little batch. Uh, this was released in 2021. Uh, this band do have quite a few albums to their name. They're a US band. Uh, this is again released through Unique Leader Records. And I picked this up entirely as a wild card um, because it came up as a recommendation on Amazon, and it was about £4 or something, so it was really inexpensive. But what really drew me in to Labyrinthian by the breathing process was the music is described as symphonic blackened deathcore or death metal. Now that is quite interesting, because I like deathcore. I'll, I'll say that, I'll go on record and say that I do like deathcore, although I don't really listen to that much deathcore. Bands like Whitechapel, Lorna Shaw, Suicide Silence, um, there's, there's loads of others, Despised Icon, blah 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 blah. I like those bands. I think they've got some good albums, some good material. And when you fancy some 
savage crushing riffery, deathcore is quite a good place to, to look. To be honest, it's a good subgenre. I was absolutely blown away by this, I have to say. This album has really, really um, opened my eyes. I think that deathcore has been undergoing a little bit of a resurgence over the last couple of years. And I don't think that anyone can really deny the fact that um, Lorna Shaw are probably responsible for a lot of that. And the likes of Thy Art Is Murder kind of coming up with some really cracking stuff as well. It's undergoing a bit of a resurgence. Um, we've seen Suicide Silence come back on absolute top form. Um, and there have a, other, been other uh, bands as well, notable bands like Aversion's Crown, really s delivering some savage goods. But this album, this is great. This is really good. There is a resonance of um, Lorna Shaw, or their most recent album, Pain Remains, simply because of the symphonic element. And I would say that Labyrinthian is nowhere near as savage as Lorna Shaw or Pain, Pain Remains, anyway, the most recent album. However, this is a very, very good album. It's very heavy. You do get some absolutely crushing breakdown riffs. You get some phenomenal deathcore style vocals. Um, just remind myself of this chap's name. So the guy uh, on vocals, his name is Chris Rabidou, or Rabidou, Rabidou. Not really sure how you pronounce that, but this guy has a cracking cracking vocal um, style really I'm gonna say that it is quite um, typical uh, a vocal style of the deathcore subgenre but this guy can do it really freaking well Chris can absolutely deliver the goods he is he's right up there in my opinion with your your Will Ramos with your Eddie Hamida with those guys this guy can definitely hold his own absolutely riffs are killer as I say the symphonic elements really do stand out as well they really do hold their own. It provides a really brilliant kind of textured nature and it helps to build those soundscapes. It gives it a, I guess it's got, it's got more of, a, of a, an attraction there. It's got more depth and emotion. Um, and some tracks such as A Savage Plea, the fourth track there, it has like a really nice keys intro, like a piano piece almost, really sets the scene. But the real standout, if you want to talk about um, sort of keys and synths and things, would be the title track, Labyrinthian, which is the fifth track there, which is an absolute tear-jerking stunner. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a heavy song, but it's emotively crushing. It's like an anchor. It just drags you into these dark, deep depths. Absolutely beautiful. It's a really, really, really deep, emotive track. Definitely check out. Well, check out this whole album. But check out Labyrinthian if you want to... If you want to see deeply emotive, beautiful, symphonic deathcore, that's a track for you. However, I would also say that there, there is a real strong blackened element to this. Um, I know that some other deathcore bands, such as Carnifex, have explored the kind of blackened deathcore style um, here and there. But this, this is definitely blackened. It almost, in places, it brings Demoable Gear or Mystic Circle to mind. Um, we've got some cracking blackened riffing as well. Vocals adopt a more sort of black metal style. It's blackened. This is definitely blackened. And I think what is really good about the breathing process, or Labyrinthian in particular, is that this album, although it is deathcore, or death metal, I think that this would appease fans, um, open-minded and open-eared fans of uh, black metal as well. If you like Demoable Gear, if you like, um, shall we say, bands like Mystic Circle as well, where they do have a little bit more of a death metal kind of leaning to them, if you like bands like that, then you'd definitely be able to appreciate this. And certainly, if you're a deathcore fan, then you are definitely going to be able to appreciate this. Blackened elements or not. I mean, you've got tons of blast beats. You've got cracking riffs, cracking leads and intricacies as well savage breakdown moments, blasting. It's just great, to be honest. You've got a nice bass tone and you've got those beautiful synths and keys and soundscapes going on. It's just really good stuff, absolutely. Standouts on this album would include the second track, Shadow Self, which is really dark. It's got a lot of depth, a lot of great riffing there. Uh, Wilt, which is the third track, which is 
that's one of the more more prominently deathcore tracks on the album. You get some absolutely monstrous vocal work there. Absolutely love Labyrinthian, that title track, because it's beautiful. Um, and also I Sleep, I Wake, which is a little bit more of a longer song, about seven minutes long, but it's, it's beautiful. Absolutely stunning stuff. Check it out. It's a freaking solid album. In fact, the disc is still in the CD player. I've been listening to this a lot. Check it out. The Breathing Process with Labyrinthian. Um, I need to delve into their other albums as well, but yeah, that's a really good one to check out. If you like, um, if you like Suicide Silence and Die Hard is Murder, if you like Mystic Circle and Demovable Gear, then you're going to appreciate this definitely. So there you have it. There are four al album recommendations there, um, and band recommendations for you to check out. From as I say, from someone that hasn't necessarily been that deep in the brutal death metal subgenre over the last however many years but over the last year or so I've been delving a little bit deeper into that scene so these recommendations are ones to definitely check out so just to recap we had condemned with his divine shadow absolutely savage stuff we've got the great disentomb with misery then we've got from the philippines we've got cerebral depravity with their short sweet savage slam and we've got the stunning labyrinthian from the breathing process check it out is anyone else fans of these albums or of these bands if you've never heard them check them out and let me know what you think i'm really interested to hear but thank you very much for watching my friends do feel free to uh, like and subscribe as always it's very much appreciated check back soon for more reviews and recommendations and above all my friends take care of yourselves and stay heavy <laughs>